Hello world and welcome to another episode of Making It With Chris G, where we have conversations with people in the world of entertainment who are making it from behind the scenes to the spotlight, sharing their stories and insight to help you get one step closer to making it. Today's guest is Oliver Wood from the Wood Brothers. The band is releasing a new album, One Drop of Truth, on February 2nd, 2018. This is the band's sixth studio album and completely independent release on their own label with the support of 30 Tigers in Nashville, Tennessee. Recently, a few weeks before this conversation, they released their second single from that album, Happiness Jones. Check that out right now on Spotify or wherever you listen to music. This was a super quick interview and hope to get Oliver back on for our usual long format conversation down the road, but it was, was still amazing. So it's not the 45 minute plus that you're used to, but I could not pass on the opportunity to have such an amazing guest on the show. In this episode, we talk about the new album, Oliver Wood's musical influences and inspirations, his early days with Tinsley Ellis, advice for aspiring songwriters, self-producing your own album, and much, much more. You'll notice I'm trying something new with this episode in a shorter format, and I throw in a couple of quick interludes between the interview, filling in any gaps in the amazing story and journey of the Wood Brothers. I didn't want to leave that out and want to make sure you guys hear that. To learn more about the Wood Brothers, check out thewoodbrothers.com and grab a copy of their new album, One Drop of Truth. If you're listening to this before February 2nd, 2018, then pre-order your copy and support independent music, my friends. Thank you all so much for listening and joining us every single Thursday. If this is your first time, welcome. We hope to have you back as a regular listener. We're available wherever you listen to podcasts. If there is a platform or an app that you listen to podcasts and we're not there, let us know. I will try to figure it out how to get there. But uh, we're on Spotify, iTunes, Podcast Addicts, my favorite for, for Android, Stitcher. So we're pretty much everywhere where podcasts live. There's two things that you can do that would really help us rate and review this podcast on iTunes. Those ratings and reviews really go a long way. And it's not just listens and downloads that affect the rankings. It's the ratings and reviews that really help us go a long way, climb up on, on the iTunes charts and be able to get more amazing and inspiring guests like Oliver Wood. Also, if you're listening to this, we have a unique episode cover for, for every podcast. So take a screenshot of that. Take a screenshot that you're listening to the episode and share it on Twitter and Instagram. Tag me and Oliver Wood. Let us know you're listening. Let us know your thoughts. And thank you all so much for, for all the support and for sharing the show. Now grab your pen and paper and I hope you enjoy this conversation with Oliver Wood. We we'll go to your your first band, King Johnson, real quick. Uh, it had uh, roots and a New Orleans style flavor, and I lived in New Orleans for three years and have been really influenced by all the amazing talent that comes out of New Orleans. Who are some of the artists and musicians that influenced your music and I guess your early music with, with King Johnson? Um. Well, certainly a lot of uh, a lot of New Orleans music, um, and I'd say before I even uh, knew about all the music that came from New Orleans, I I was really into my dad's record collection, uh, which included some a bunch of blues stuff among among all kinds of other things, but it was the blues uh, stuff that really stuck out to me, and, and Light and Hopkins, uh, Jerry um, Jimmy Reed. And uh, Sonny McGree, Sonny McGee, Brownie Terry, um, that kind of stuff really, like Light and Hopkins was something that I could really, I don't know, it just drew me in more than anything else. And it also, as a young musician, just trying to learn music, it was fair and simple enough that it doesn't mean it was easy to do it right, but it mm -hmm. was something that I could imagine myself doing, doing and I could... Uh, sort of practice and work towards it and get close and that was uh, exciting too you know and you definitely have a very cool history when it comes to the blues before before we get to that you have a new album coming out and the last album paradise was the first self-released and self-produced album by the wood brothers and the new album Correct. comes out february 2nd one drop of truth and you already released the second single off that album ha happiness jones tell us a bit, little bit about the process of making this new album. This is also self-produced who helped you work on this. Tell us a little bit about the creation of it. Yeah, well, this is the first album. This is the second album we self-produced. And, 
And we've always had this fantasy of uh, um, making the process a little bit more fun and different. Um, and typically, uh, I think it's very typical, not just for us, but for, for a lot of bands to compile, you know, write and compose and write and, and compile songs um, for a year or more before uh, you actually get down to recording the album. And then generally the recording happens in, in uh, you know, within a few weeks. Um, and you have a producer who's scheduled and a, and a studio scheduled. And so you have this sort of relatively small window to to make a record. Um, and that's always been how, how we did it in the past. And it's kind of stressful. And there's a lot of, it feels like quite a compromise to be rushed uh, like that. And we always had this fantasy of doing things more like they used to do it actually um, before there were long playing records, you know, there was mm -hmm. just uh, little, uh, little singles. And so we loved the idea of just writing, a, writing two songs, going in and recording those two um, and then being done for, for a little while. Um, so that's basically what we did for this album is starting about a year ago. Mm -hmm. We, recorded songs as we wrote them and what that allowed us to do is give each song a little more attention and uh, it allowed us to be more experimental and um, and since we have our own label and um, we're producing it ourselves we also had no one else judging or telling us <laughs> a deadline or anything like that so right. it was very freeing to, to do it in that way and I think that's what's special about this record to us is that we just had fun. We were never stressed out about it. We we had this process that was spread out over several months and um, even almost a year. So uh, it was different. It was really fun and it was it was liberating and just nice. You know, after doing this for a long time, you figure out things that work and you figure out how to uh, sort of edit yourself and make decisions as a group and how to collaborate and. And I think this is an album, an album where we really realized a lot of those things we've been practicing all these years. Mm -hmm, very cool. What is the thing that you're most excited about with this album that you're about to share with the world? Um, well, I, I don't know. I get excited about every re, every release <laughs> uh, because it's exciting That's a good thing. <laughs> to you know, see what people think of the music. Um and I hope that the, the fun that we had making it will translate into how people hear it. Um, and I don't know what that looks like, but, uh, but I, I feel similar than, you know, it's, it's kind of like these, it's like when you have a kid or something, you're just excited <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, uh, so this, this is no different, but I'm excited to go out and play the songs live too, because that's a fun challenge. That's very different than playing them in the studio. So it'll be fun to see how audiences react to to the songs uh, when we play them live. Yeah, and you guys definitely have some a lot of tour dates coming up, so people should definitely check out the website, which we'll share in the show notes, and they should see where you guys are coming. And I, I love the the first two singles off the album already, so I can't wait to to hear the rest of it. But in in today's music Thank business, you. a lot of musicians are self producing their own albums, especially those who are still in the early stages of their career. What tips can you yeah. share from your experience to help DIY musicians that to take, I guess, their self-produced records to the next level or help it stand out a little bit more than, than the average? I'm, I'm not an expert with uh, things like social media and marketing. <laughs> I, I'm more, much more interested just in the creative part. Um, so I sort of leave that up to, to other people. <laughs> you know, I'm not a great resource for that side of it. However, I know it's, it's possible now to do a lot of things on your own. My advice would be for people on the creative side, on the early stages, is to to really just um, put yourself in at 100% and don't uh, don't compromise things like. I just feel like if, if, if someone has a, a strong creative idea, um, if you can follow through and just sort of trust your heart and follow through with it, that's half the difficulty. 
you know, a lot of people just sit on their idea and they think, oh, I can never do that or no one's going to like this. <laughs> but I think the people who really break through are the ones who just say, screw it, I'm just going to do this. Right. And it's just doing it that is the hardest part. So if you just do it and follow through and don't let anyone discourage you or distract you, um, get your pure idea recorded. Um, and there are so many resources, of course, on the technical side, you can teach yourself how to record, or there are lots of um, you know, people who, who are very talented, whose talents go into the technical side of things. So people who are working in studios and even home studios that can get incredible sounds. So there's no excuse um, to not do it, although you can make excuses all day, and I know because I've done it a lot. <laughs> and so. Every time I'm surprised, if I just do something and finish it. I'm like, that. it feels good. And if you can keep your ideas intact um, and also learn how to work with other people if that's necessary or be <laughs> incredibly motivated and do everything yourself, like a Prince or a Stevie Wonder or something like that. I mean, there's people that, that are incredible role models for people who just did it their own way and nothing stopped them. And... Their, their, uh, the purity of their ideas just comes out. You can just hear it right away. Half of it's just a motivation thing and a confidence thing or a lack thereof, and you just have to overcome that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So, so your father was, or maybe still is, a biology professor and even went to Harvard. And so as a, yeah. I guess, as a fellow professor, one of my favorite things to always ask in interviews, if let's say your father were to, came, were to come to you for advice, he had to start this new music business program at his university for, for songwriters, and he could include courses from any program or completely design new ones, or even uh, pull in some real life projects for students to learn. If he came to you for advice on putting this program together, uh, from your experience, what you know, from touring, from songwriting, and producing your own records, what uh, should students be learning? What courses would they would you have them take, or what courses would you create uh, for this program? So, if if they are for songwriting, yeah. So, so we'll say it was a music business yeah, program focused yeah. on songwriters. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what I think. Like, when I think about what, what my dad believes in for education is that, you know, just listening to somebody lecture all the time mm -hmm. is not how you learn something. You learn right. things by doing them. I love that. And so I would encourage, if, if there were classes, I would encourage um, collaboration mm -hmm. and you know, actually hands-on, just, you know, write songs, write a lot of them, and listen to songs, and listen to a lot of them, and uh, write songs in groups, write songs individually, because I don't, I don't think there's any substitute for doing it, and uh, having gone to music school myself mm -hmm. for a short time, or, or actually over the years, I went several times, <laughs> <laughs> but I... I, I learned a lot from it, and part of what I learned was what I what I didn't like about it. What and what I don't like is that everybody, if everybody learns exactly the same thing, and you're in a creative field like songwriting, and you all learn the same skills, and you learn the same thing every day, uh, and you, I, I just feel like there has to be something that promotes individuality. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's another thing that I think is huge, is that students should be encouraged to find their own voice. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of time in any structured environment like that, everybody's learning the same tricks and the same tips and things and, and methods. And what that does is makes everybody kind of sound the same, mm -hmm. or at least feel the same. Mm -hmm. And sure, there are people who are always going to be innovative with strong personalities, but there are also people who uh, who will just sort of fall into this structure. And I think it can really mute your creativity. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage a program like that to really um, be a hands-on thing that promotes um, finding your own voice and not trying to keep up. You know, it's not like a sports, it's not sports or 
science or something where you might try to get the best grade in the class or right. whatever, you know, so it's art, it should be creative and it should come from each individual mm-hmm. and be unique to them, you know. I love that. Yeah, I think you just inspired me to create more uh, group projects for my for my students. <laughs> so Yeah, and group projects are, are great and I think you learn from each other a lot. That's just, and even as a as a musician coming up, uh, um, I learned the most. You know, I learned a lot from listening to records and and observing others. But I learned the most just playing in bands with other people. And you learn by doing it, and by doing it with other people who are doing it. And those are your teachers. You know, mm-hmm. and sometimes you get in a band of older guys. I was lucky just to have some really cool mentors. Uh, but they taught me, you know, so many things, just by, if nothing else, by example. Early in his career, Oliver Wood spent a few years on the road as the rhythm guitarist for American blues legend Tinsley Ellis. Throughout this journey, Tinsley became a mentor and believer in Oliver. While on the road with him, Tinsley gave Oliver opportunities to play his own solos during shows. He shared records with Oliver from Freddie King, encouraged him to find his voice and even allowed him to sing a song every night during his tours. The two recorded an album together, which also features a 14-year-old Derek Trucks on slide guitar. In this next segment, Oliver shares some of the stories from his days with Tinsley Ellis. Eventually, Oliver Wood moved on to start his own band based out of Atlanta, Georgia, King Johnson, where Oliver really started his journey as a songwriter. The band toured mostly regional and weekend warrior style. While Oliver was on tour with Tinsley and working on his own band, King Johnson, his brother and co-founding member of the Wood Brothers, Chris Wood, was playing and touring with Medeski, Martin, and Wood, with whom he had lots of success for 15 years prior to forming the Wood Brothers with his brother Oliver. King Johnson opened a few shows for Medeski, Martin, and Wood, one of which we talk about in his next segment. Oliver got to jam with them a few times in front of a live audience and the chemistry with his brother Chris was undeniable. It was a magical chemistry only two brothers could have. Eventually, after some recording sessions, they decided to make an album. The management for Medeski, Martin, and Wood loved what they heard and decided to manage the Wood Brothers, and they also got them the same booking agent. Oliver Wood went from being a completely DIY weekend warrior to having management and a major agency. Their management got them signed to Blue Note Records, the label that represented Nora Jones, on which they released their first two albums. Tinsley was was a very serious mentor. Uh, he gave me my first road gig. We basically, I was living in Atlanta, and in, and sort of a you know, in my early twenties, and playing in some bars around town, and he. A couple times, I guess, came out and saw me play and, and thought that I would be good, um, not just musically, but just uh, personality-wise, I think, and I was young and hungry to go on tour, and so he uh, he gave me my first gig, and he was, um, you know, it was basically my position was to back him up, mm-hmm. um, and but just a great education for, you know, uh, for a young player to go out and see what not only musically what how that all works but just how does it work to be on tour and well, that, just to see what that lifestyle is and, and how you how every day works and traveling and um, you know eating crappy food and <laughs> uh, it, it's a whole different way to live but anyway he was a great mentor because um, you know I learned a lot from him musically just watching him work um, but I also learned a lot about the business, and um, and he was a real encouraging. I was lucky that he was very supportive, and and after I had been in his band for a couple of years, he really encouraged me when I wanted to start my own project with Dean Johnson. He was very, you know, he was my number one support and encouragement, and uh, that was really important. You know, you have to have people like that on your path, and and he was an important one. And to this day, he's still one of my best friends. I love that. Very cool. So your brother was having a lot of success also while you were on tour with Tinsley Ellis and uh, you know, King Johnson, and he was touring with Medeski, Martin, and Wood. And the yeah. two of you didn't really see each other a lot, but there was a moment, and one of my favorite stories, uh, and I would like to ask you to share that story, but where King Johnson opened for Medeski, Martin, and Wood in Winston-Salem at, at Ziggy's. Mm-hmm. What led to the two of you, I guess, forming the Wood Brothers? Was it that moment? How maybe did that moment inspire to you guys starting the Wood Brothers? 
Well, there was a couple of moments. That was a that was a moment where where we were able to cross paths and then actually play together. Like the, um, they asked me to sit in and play some some tunes with Badesky, Martin, and Wood. And that was the first time Chris and I had played together in a long time, like in years. Mm -hmm. uh, and but it was at a different stage where we had developed sort of some. Uh, our personalities and our and our formed our who we were as people. So to mm -hmm. reconnect like that and be on stage and just really have this sort of almost psychic music connection and <laughs> just crisp but to like we looked like we were looking in a mirror or something. We were just <laughs> it was easy. It was like nothing to play together. It was just so natural. Mm -hmm. So uh, not long after that we had a family vacation uh where Chris and I brought some instruments and, and did some play you know, made it a point, all right, let's sit down and play. That was really fun and and uh so we recorded a little bit and did a little bit of writing and improvising and just for fun. Uh but it was another effortless sort of uh just fun way for us to reconnect and, and keep in mind we had been living, you know, a thousand miles apart and mm -hmm. I was living in Atlanta and he was living in New York and and we had grown apart, um, not just musically, but even as brothers. So the music was kind of the way that we were able to reconnect with each other. And um, and so, you know, eventually we decided, hey, let's write some songs and let's record and let's, let's be a little more serious about it. And I think it was always with the intention of just having fun and connecting. Mm -hmm. And of course, even better, it turned into an actual enterprise and eventually it would become our full-time our full-time gig in 2010 emi records fell apart the wood brothers label blue note records was part of emi who got acquired by universal music group and the label went through lots of changes the band moved on to a new label which was zach brown's owned southern grounds Zach Brown signed a few artists whose music he was very passionate about. He was a champion for all the artists on his roster, including the Wood Brothers, whom he even took out on tour as an opening band, which gave them the opportunity to play in front of 10,000 plus fans every single night. The Wood Brothers released their third and fourth album under Southern Ground, having had the opportunity to work with Zach Brown. As Zach Brown's career started taking off, he unfortunately had to let the label go, which meant the Wood Brothers were back in between labels. This was the point where they asked themselves, do we even need a label? By now they had plenty of experience working with great producers and labels. The band decided to finance, budget, and all three members co-produced their fifth and newest album. Their fifth album, Paradise, which was their first self-released album under their label named Honey Jar, was the most successful album so far, at least looking at the charts. They reached number one on the Billboard Heat Seeker chart, were as high as number six on the Billboard Folk chart, and even in the top 50 of the Billboard rock and indie charts. I didn't get a chance to ask Oliver about their partnership with 30 Tigers, but it looks like they are doing the marketing and distribution for the Wood Brothers. 30 Tigers is a really cool independent company out of Nashville that offers many services for really amazing artists and has built a great reputation in the industry. In this segment, Oliver shares some great advice and parting words for aspiring musicians and songwriters. I'll tell you the one that I'm still learning, but I hope is one of the most important ones, is to just stay in the moment and not worry about things. I mean, especially when it comes to to music um, and a career in music. I mean, I feel so lucky to to be where I'm at, just to be able to do what I love to do. And if I really thought about it, I could really freak out. Like if I thought in <laughs> advance, like what if people stop coming to concerts? Or <laughs> what if my fing I lose all my fingers? I can't play guitar anymore. Or, you know, it's like this, I have this amazing special thing happening. And just like anything else, you could lose it tomorrow. So right. not worrying and just kind of enjoying the present. And that goes for everything besides music too. But, um, but you know, the best art is made when you're just, you're not thinking about anything, you're not thinking about who's watching or what people are going to think, you just do it mm -hmm. um, and enjoy it while you have it. 
That's a really, really great message. What's the best way for people to to find out about all the things that are happening in the world of the Wood Brothers? Um, where where should they connect with you on social media and what's the website and everything? Yeah, absolutely. All the social media things. I mean, the, the woodbrothers.com is a great place to start and everything else is, uh, but, but we're easy to find on all those uh, and all that media. And, um, and yeah, we hope to, to see some people out and about. And hopefully we'll get to Florida this year, too. Yeah, I hope so, too. So uh, everyone listening, the, the new album, One Drop of Truth, comes out February 2nd. Definitely pick that out and go to uh, woodbrothers.com for more info. And then uh, the question I always ask everyone at the end is, what is your definition of making it? Ah, uh, good one. <laughs> um, my definition of making it is just if you're doing what you love, you've made it. And I, I think I made it much earlier than I thought I did. Um, because once you have uh, a thousand people buying tickets or something, you could you could think that was that was it. But I think it's way before that. If you can figure out what it is that you love to do and you just start doing it, you're you're there. You've made it. Because you might make a million dollars and that's not going to make you any happier. Right. It's all about just that moment of realizing, oh my gosh, I get to do this, you know, <laughs> and I love doing it. So it could be anything. Thanks so much for, for taking the time. I would love to maybe one day down the road, go, go long format. I had a ton of more questions for you and I'd love to maybe hear some of the cool stories that you guys have and how uh, like fan experiences and how your music has connected with fans but just thanks so much for, for what you guys sure. do for putting amazing music out there in the world and um, I'm looking forward to, to a whole lot more so thanks so much for, for being on the show and I appreciate it thank you so much for, for having me Chris Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Oliver Wood of the Wood Brothers. I hope you enjoyed my little uh, attempt at storytelling in, bet- uh, in between segments and adding a little bit more context to the story of the Wood Brothers. Make sure to check out and visit the woodbrothers.com to learn about the Wood Brothers and their newest album. And pending when you're listening to this, either go and pre-order or pick up a copy of their sixth album, One Drop of Truth. All the show notes, links, resources to everything that we talked about will be available at makingitwithchrisg.com forward slash podcast forward slash 070 for episode number 70. Getting closer and closer to number 100. Thank you all so much for listening. Shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon. If you want to support the podcast on Patreon, check out patreon.com forward slash making it with Chris G. Take a screenshot of this episode and share it on Twitter and Instagram. Tag Oliver and I and let us know what you thought and share it with all your friends. Thank you all so much for listening and joining us every single Thursday with another episode of Making It With Chris G. And spread love, positivity, and kindness in the world. Go see shows, meet people, make stuff. Peace, my friends. Peace.